Hello, Class 5-1 Orange Group. Mr. Waterman here with the second half of your language arts lesson on Tuesday, February 8th, 2022. I hope you and your family are safe and well and that your day has been off to a fantastic start. Okay, so in this half, we are going to be starting the next story. Okay. I have scanned the story and I have uploaded the PDF along with the workbook that goes along with this story, okay? This is lesson 29, and the next two stories we are going to be reading are called Two of Everything and Stone Soup, okay? Now, we're going to look at the vocabulary words first, vocabulary and context. Okay, please take a memo of these words because we will be referring back to them at some point in time as we read this story. So I'm on page 482, vocabulary and context, and it says to study each context card. And what I like to do is I like to look at the pictures as I'm reading the word and then reading how the word is used in a sentence. After that, you're going to place the vocabulary words in alphabetical order, okay? Please feel free to read along with me. Number one, search. It is fun to search for buried treasure. You never know what you will find. So as you can see here, the two children are on the beach and they are digging in the sand. They thought it would be fun to search for hidden treasure. Number two. Contained. This old box contained jewels, coins, and other treasures. Wow. Whoever finds that is going to be very lucky. Number three. Startled. The diver was startled to find treasure at the bottom of the ocean. Look at that. If you're startled, you are surprised. Number four, odd. Do you think it is odd or strange to look for buried treasure? I don't think so. I would love to look for buried treasure. Number five, leaned. The woman leaned over to get a better view of the whale near the ship. So she's leaned over the ship. But you have to be careful when you're doing that. You don't want to fall. Six, tossed. They tossed the supplies into the trunk to pack for their family vacation. Okay? To toss something is to kind of throw it. Okay? The next word is grateful. The museum was very grateful or thankful to get the old statues, okay? And people will visit that museum to see the statues, okay? You know this word grateful because we talked about it during the Thanksgiving speeches. And the last word is village. The village is near the ocean. People find coins buried on the beach. Okay. 
you can see the village there. Okay, so please remember all of those vocabulary words and now begin to put them in alphabetical order. Which word comes first? If you guessed contained, you are correct. Contained starts with the letter C. What are the next words after contained? Now I'm going to turn the page. Read and comprehend. So always remember, while you are reading, understand the characters. So understanding characters. Think about how characters act when something important happens to them. Think about what they say, do, and think. These details give text evidence to help you understand more about them. You can write text evidence about characters in a chart like this one. Character, this would be the character's name and the picture. You can talk about what happens and you can write their words, thoughts, and their actions. As you're reading, reading, remember to summarize. As you read, stop to tell important ideas in your own words, especially if you are reading together with mom or dad. Now, let's preview our topic. We are looking at traditional stories. Traditional stories have been told for many years. Long ago, long ago, stories were told aloud and then retold. Now, most stories are written down. People everywhere can read them. Traditional stories often are told to teach a lesson. In two of everything, the characters learn an important lesson. Take a look here. This looks like a teacher is reading with her students. Think about if it is better for stories to be written down or shared through speaking. What do you think? Do you think it's better to read a story or do you think it's better to listen to a story? I think most of you like listening to stories. Oftentimes, when I read to you, everyone is quiet. Now, as I turn the page, I'm looking at the genre. So we are looking at a folk tale. A folk tale is a story that is often told by people of a country. As you read, look for a simple plot that teaches a lesson. Events that could not happen in real life. Let's meet the author and illustrator. Lily Toy Hung. Lily Toy Hung enjoys camping, getting together with her large family and eating Chinese food. She also loves learning about her parents' native country, China, and its many legends and folk tales. One day, I would love to visit China and explore the land of my forefathers, she says, and maybe discover more folk tales. 
I think that's something wonderful. I know I feel the same way. I would love to go to Africa one day in the future and learn more about my ancestors' native country or countries that they came from. Because Africa is a huge continent. Now, let's begin reading Two of Everything by Lily Toy Hong. Please feel free to read along with me. Or if you would like to just listen to me read first, that's fine. Because after, I would like you to read the story two more times out loud. On your own. Or with mom or dad. Or with your brothers or sisters. Let's begin. Once long ago, in a humble little hut, lived Mr. Hacktack and his wife, Mrs. Hacktack. They were old and very poor. What little they ate came from their tiny garden. Let's get that. Oh, I've moved the mirror. There we go. Look at that. And I'm going to turn and switch so you can see me as I'm reading. Okay? In a lucky year, when the harvest was plentiful, Mr. Hacktack had a little extra to take to the village. There, he traded turnips, potatoes, and other vegetables for clothing, lamp oil, and fresh seeds. There's their little garden. Let's find out what happens next. One spring morning, when Mr. Hacktack was digging in his garden, his shovel struck something hard. Puzzled, he dug deeper into the dark ground until he came upon an ancient pot made of brass. How odd, said Mr. Hocktock to himself. To think that I have been digging here all these years and never came upon this pot before. I will take it home. Maybe Mrs. Hocktock can find some use for it. There's the pot. What do you think Mrs. Hocktock is saying? Let's find out. Let's see how I can do that. Nope, because that's going to move the mirror. I'll do it this way. There we go. The pot was big and heavy for old Mr. Hocktock. As he stumbled along, his purse, which contained his last five gold coins, fell to the ground. He tossed it into the pot for safekeeping and staggered home. His wife greeted him at the door. Dear husband, what a strange pot. Mr. Hocktock explained how he found the pot. I wonder what we can do with it, said Mrs. Hocktock. It looks too large to cook in 
and too small to bathe in. Let's turn the page and find out what happens. What are they doing? As Mrs. Hot Talk leaned over to peer into the pot, her hairpin, the only one she owned, fell in. She felt around in the pot and suddenly her eyes grew round with surprise. Look, she shouted, I've pulled out two hairpins exactly alike and two purses too. Sure enough, the purses were identical and so were the hairpins. Inside each purse were five gold coins. Look at that. Looks like they're having some good luck. Mr. Hocktock was so excited, he jumped up and down. Let's put my winter coat inside the pot. If we are lucky again, the pot will make two coats and then we will both stay warm. So into the pot went one coat and out came two coats. They began to search the house and quickly put more things into the magical pot. If only we had some meat, wished Mr. Hucktock, or fresh fruit, or one delicious sweet cake. Uh-oh, now they're having fun with this pot. Let's find out what happens. Here they are asleep at night. Mr. Hawk Talk smiled. I know we can get anything we want. I'm sorry, Mrs. Hawk Talk smiled. I know we can get anything we want, she said. She put their tin coins into one purse, then threw it into the pot. She pulled out two purses with 10 coins in each. What a clever wife I have, cried Mr. Hocktock. Each time we do this, we will have twice as much money as before. The Hocktocks worked late into the night, filling and emptying the pot until the floor was covered with coins. Let's analyze the story so far. Do you agree with Mr. Hawk Talk that his wife is clever? Do you think she's really smart? Morning came and off went Mr. Hawk Talk with the long list of things to buy in the village. Instead of vegetables, his basket was full of gold coins. Mrs. Hocktock finished all of her chores and sat down to enjoy a cup of tea. She sipped her tea and admired the brass pot. Then, with a grateful heart, she knelt and embraced it. Dear Pot, I do not know where you came from, but you are my best friend. She stooped over the pot to look inside. What do you think she will see inside? 
<gasps> uh oh. Da da da. That does not look good. At that very moment, Mr. Hawk Talk returned. His arms were so full of packages that he had to kick the door open. Bang! Mrs. Hawk Talk was so startled that she lost her balance and fell head first into the pot. Mr. Hawk Talk ran over and grabbed his wife's legs. He pulled and tugged until she slid out onto the floor. But when he looked at the pot again, he gasped. <gasps> Two more legs were sticking straight out of it. Naturally, he took hold of the ankles and pulled. Out came a second person. She looked exactly like his wife. Oh, wow. The new Mrs. Hawk Talk sat silently on the floor looking lost. But the first Mrs. Hawk Talk cried, I am your one and only wife. Put that woman back into the pot right now. Mr. Hawk Talk yelled, no, if I put her back, we will not have two women, but three. One wife is enough for me. He backed away from his angry wife and tripped and fell headfirst into the pot himself. Uh-oh, now this is getting good. Analyze the text. Point of view. What story details do you learn from the person telling the story? Which details do you learn from what Mr. Hop Talk says? Do we think this is a good situation here? Mm, I don't know. Would you want a clone of yourself? Someone identical? This doesn't look good. Both Mrs. Hawk Talks rushed to rescue him. Each grasped an ankle and together they pulled him out. There were two more legs in the pot, so they pulled out the other Mr. Hawk Talk too. Just what use does one Mr. Hawk Talk have for another? Mr. Hawk Talk cried angrily. This pot is not as wonderful as we thought it to be. Now even our troubles are beginning to double. But his wife had been thinking while he was yelling. What is she thinking about? Is it a good idea? Now they look a bit happier here. Calm down, she said. It is good that the other Mrs. Hawk Talk has her own Mr. Hawk Talk. Perhaps we will become best of friends. After all, we are so alike. He will, we are, excuse me. After all, we are so alike. He will be a brother to you and she a sister to me. With our pot, we can make two of everything, so there will be plenty to go around. And that is what they did. The Hawk Talks built two fine new homes. Each house had identical teapots, rice bowls, silk embroideries, and bamboo furniture. From the outside, the houses looked exactly alike, 
but there was one difference. Hidden in one house was a big brass pot. Of course, the Hawk Talks were always very careful not to fall into it again. Here we go. Look here. Uh-oh. Look at the looks on these people's faces. The new Hawk Talks and the old Hawk Talks did become good friends. The neighbors thought the Hawk Talks had grown so rich that they decided to have two of everything, even themselves. And that's the end of the story. We're going to go into some more details later this week. But for now, what did you think of that story? Did you like it? Did you enjoy listening to me reading it? What I want you to do now is I want you to go back and read the story twice, two times, and read it with expression the same way that I read it with expression to you. Read it to mom and read it to dad. Read it to your brother or read it to your sister. Sit in front of a mirror, just like I'm in front of this mirror, and read it. That's the best way to see how you are pronouncing and saying the words, right? Have fun with this story. Take care, safe well, and I will see you in tomorrow's videos. I quite like this story. Enjoy the rest of your day studying. Bye-bye for now.